あるとマイクみたいになりたいでも電話してくれないオークランドとウクレンドから世界チャンピオンバーチャルプローズ始まるよりよりよりよりよりよりよりよりバーチャルプローズSo 36, Vert Pros ain't nothing to fuck with of the Virtual Pros Podcast. My name is Al, a.k.a. Henny Omega, a.k.a. Percules, a.k.a. Buji Nagata, a.k.a. Draco Satsumura, a.k.a. Lexapro Bliss, and with me, my main oos, Mike. Hey, motherfuckers, it is Mike, a.k.a. Lord Alfred Blaze, a.k.a. JJ Chillin, a.k.a. Lil Uzi Kurt Hennig, a.k.a. Podcast Ginger Chapman. <laughs> Today's topic,、uh, happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Favorite、Thanks. instances of Graf's love. What love connections made these two hard rocks smile? Hit us on Twitter and Instagram at VRTL Pros. Hit us on SoundCloud. Hit that heart. You know, I like it. And、uh, hit us on iTunes. Leave a review, please.、Uh, Mike, you and I are recording this on Valentine's Day. Does that make you feel a certain type of way?、Uh, like. A lover way or like a shameful way? Shit, both, man. I love you, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, more A and actually a lot of, of B too, but you know, <laughs> what the fuck are you going to do? This is the path we chose, unfortunately. That's all right with me. I like talking about <laughs> wrestling. Um, <laughs>、okay. we got a bunch of emails. Actually, not really. We got three. Uh, do you mind starting off with the first one? I knew I was forgetting something. Yeah, hold on a second. The first one is from Nicholas. Is that? Yeah, yeah, that's、yep. the first one. Okay.、Uh, Unless you want to read the,、uh, you want to read the big guy newsletter? No, I do not. But,、uh, this is a question for the pod. Thoughts on the Papa Hales phenomenon? Sincerely, Muscle Mark Mero, aka D Bowl Brown, aka Trend Owen, aka Stanozolo Hansen, aka Clenbuter, Clenbuter Al Snow. That one, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Yo, Nick, are、uh, you on the gas, dude? Are you on the, are you on the roids? Think, If you are, let me know. I'm on the roids. Yeah. I think he's a big boy. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, I feel there's still people that are with me that listen to the show that aren't on like internet wrestling shit. So、yeah. I guess I should, should explain this Papa Hales man for them, but he's basically an older man, like an elderly man. I don't know when you're allowed to start calling people elderly, but he seems like he's elderly, I guess. Yeah.、Um, and he goes to like indie wrestling shows all over the country and he's very positive and everybody loves him. And, um, he makes t shirts and I think he's going blind. So he just wants to see as much wrestling as he can before the dark day. Which,、uh, you know, that's pretty commendable. That's a pretty cool thing. So, yeah, I, I have like, I'm not really in the realm of this guy. Like,、uh, I think he's been to a couple shows I was at, but like, I've never spoken to him. And I don't, I'm, I'm a grown adult, so I don't have like any desire to speak to him. But I mean, you know, if our paths crossed or something, I'd be like, s u p But, you know, I don't know. It's,、uh, it's definitely not my lane, I guess, is the most、uh, political way for me to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm all about taking advantage of people that need father figures in their life. So,、uh, go ahead and make your money. I'm just kidding. It's a fucking joke. It's, he seems like a very jolly man. Like, he likes、yeah. wrestling. Like, I don't know him、he、personally, was, so I can't really fucking say anything about him. He seems like a cool、yeah. guy. I don't know. He was, at,、um, he was at AIW that doubled the tag team I want with the Headhunters. And me and Brian, thrift store jobber, got the actual ring worn headhunter shirts, but they had like an unworn one and he got that one. So that's, we have a connection there. I know、we、some people、won. are like giving him shit about like taking money away from the boys because he was selling his shirts, but uh, fuck that man. Get your money. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Shirts are a two way street, man. Like, uh, I, th- 
I think he has companies do them for him, so they're gambling. It's like their money they're gambling with. But yeah, it's just like it's a gamble to make them, and you don't need to buy them. So yeah, <laughs> so right. <laughs> it's not like I don't know. You know, it's not like he's a wrestler and he only has one shirt. He's just a guy, so you don't need to buy his shirts if you don't want to. He's like a clothing line now, man. It's kind of commendable. Hey, yo, Papa Hales, if you're listening, get that money, man. I appreciate that yo, shit. Let's collab, Papa Hales. <laughs> yeah, let's do a let's... Papa Hales virtual pro shirt. I'm with it. Uh, the next email is from Kyle. One of my favorites, by the way. Uh, the title is Major Plot Hole or Ingenious Foresight. Uh, Kyle writes in, What's up, gentlemen? I would start off with compliments about your awesome music and killer production value, but you already know that you're fucking killing it. Yeah, I know. All right, so back when I was watching it happen live, the team of Erwin R. Scheister and Ted DiBiase didn't strike me as being out of place at all because they were both money-minded guys and everything. But now that I'm old and cynical, but now that I'm old and cynical about how the world works in terms of wealth, power, politics, and taxes, it seems totally ridiculous that a vaguely rich bad guy who's presumably who presumably came into wealth through unscrupulous means would cozy up with an overzealous employee of the IRS. At first glance, those two types are like oil and water and would never be found rolling in the same circles. Or shit, maybe they would. A sketchy rich guy would probably have a guy on the inside at the top, right? What are your thoughts on this? From Kyle, a.k.a. Vern Gagne, a.k.a. Justin Edible, a.k.a. John T.H. Cena. Um, <laughs> now that you put it that way, Kyle, uh... You're right. It kind of doesn't make sense at all. Like, if I am out here uh, making undocumented money, the last person I'd want to talk to is someone from the internal revenue system. So it kind of doesn't make sense. But maybe, just maybe, he has IRS in his pocket. What do you think, Mike? Uh, I just wanted to mention that Kyle also sent an apology email because he thought somebody used Justin Edible before, and he wanted to substitute it for Hiroshi Tana Hotbox. Oh, that's right. Some more, yeah. So that was nice of him to send a send a uh, an apology. Uh, they're all evil white people, so they're all friends. <laughs> That's just how it works. All evil white people are friends with each other. It doesn't matter their profession. You got the last one. Uh, the last one is from Dio Day Day. It says, "You guys weren't joking. What's popping, y'all? Love the podcast. I wanted to get this off my chest while it's still fresh in my mind. Tonight, I took my girlfriend to WWE Live in Oakland." tonight and i was really excited because the last time i seen wrestling live was 20 years ago when i was in first grade uh my girl doesn't give a shit about wrestling but she was so in the spirit of the atmosphere she bought herself a john cena pbr shirt from the merch stand (laughs) anyways i really thought you guys were exaggerating about grown-ass men carrying around the replica championship belts everywhere i looked there was some dork walking around like they were the real champ one guy even went as far as carrying a full-size John Cena cardboard cutout and was screaming, I'm going home with John, as he was leaving the arena. Jesus Christ, I've never been in a more cringy situation in my life. Uh, just thought I'd share that. Peace and love, Dio, a.k.a. Macho Man 21 Savage, a.k.a. May Young's Baby Daddy. I like that Macho Man 21 Savage. It's a good one. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we can enlighten somebody that... uh then uh wwe <laughs> events are a dark place to attend <laughs> wait so you went to nxt albany recently right like how many uh yeah. champions of the world were there well i was just i mean we could just go into two-man scramble because i was going to lead off with that anyways <laughs> yeah. uh but i mean you could go first for two-man scramble but yeah i'll get i'll get into the nxt albany I mean, like, the last event I attended was No Mercy, and, like, yeah, there was this dude rocking uh, the IC belt backwards like Dolph Ziggler, and, uh, yeah, it's just shit like that where I guess I'm not phased by it anymore, like, it doesn't really catch my eye because so many people do it, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe just me getting more acclimated into the cringe. Yep. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll get into Two Man Scramble. Uh, I don't have that many topics, but we'll get into it. So, Mike, uh, February of this year marks the one-year anniversary of our Instagram. Uh, Mm. What were your favorite moments? Um, I don't know. Uh, It was cool (laughs) when, like, a lot of people followed us. And, uh, (laughs) you know, I learned how to, like, record videos on my phone because of the Instagram. So, I guess I learned a skill. Um, I, like... (laughs) 
I don't know if I want to say that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it now. I can edit it out if it's whack. Or, I, I don't like, know. I like seeing uh, Al always have to interact with all the male, uh, <laughs> the male fans of the show. <laughs> I'll get into <laughs> because, that later. <laughs> because uh, I, I do another podcast. I mention this every fucking episode. You guys know I do another podcast at this point. But I do another podcast, and I'm usually... I don't answer, I'll never reply to emails because I just hate replying to emails, but outside of that, like, I'm usually the guy that people ask questions to yeah. and go to and, like, Facebook DM and all this stuff, so I'm always dealing with, like, people who listen to the show, and uh, I don't mind it, but for some reason with wrestling, I'm just like, eh, I don't need, I don't need to do this. <laughs> So, you got, so, you know, for future reference, if you contact us and you really need to talk to me, you should, you should point it out because outside of that, you're never going to get a hold of me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's our one year anniversary. I think it's probably like our strongest tentacle in the VRTL pros. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, sure. octopus, I guess. Um, aside from talking to Sasha Banks that one time and I guess being a total creep, uh, it's been fun to make money. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't want to get too into it, but like the followers we've like gotten in the past year have been kind of crazy. Um, yeah. but yeah, as a PSA, um, just read what, uh, <laughs> our, uh, whatever I like write alongside the picture, just read it. Like, so a lot of people hit us up if shit's for sale and, uh, it's starting to like wear on me. Like everything I post isn't for sale. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, like, <laughs> Like, if you're asking for sizes, I always list them. Like, I just wish you guys would read a little more because, uh, I don't know, man. Um, I don't think he listens, but one guy, he tried to trade me a Big Show t-shirt. And uh, that day, I really almost closed the Instagram. I was just really frustrated that day. Uh, I didn't like it. It just didn't seem worth it to me anymore. So, uh, I don't know. Be reasonable. Read our posts. And uh, we'll be good. But until then, it's been pretty fun, I guess. And that's the handicap of Al dealing with this because, uh, I am a me negative person, but customer service might kicks in when I'm in those situations. So I'm very helpful when it comes to things like that. So <laughs> yeah. I see these messages and I'm like, ha ha, asshole. And I just like, <laughs> you dummy, you should read better. And I, <laughs> you know, I, I get just like, I don't have to, I don't have to be like customer service Mike and be like, well, it's this and blah, blah, blah. So it's a, it's a good trade off. I used to be like that. And now I'm just like, read the post, like, yeah. Does it say it's for sale? No. All right then. Uh, and then like I'll, I'll let it <laughs> let it rock. Thrift store jobber gets that a lot too. I'll look at his comments and it'll be like, "What size is that?" Like you know, literally <laughs> like a half an inch away from where it says the size, and it's just like, <laughs> "What do you?" I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know. Like I I have dull idiot moments too, so I'm not gonna you know put everybody on blast, but I do read usually when it, on Instagram. Right. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of window shoppers and a lot of people that like to pretend they're going to buy shit. You might be my number one enemy. Like, you can't mm-hmm. say, like, dibs. You can't say, like, claimed and then not follow up. If you do that, yeah. I'll probably block you. So that's my PSA for IG. Uh, yeah, let's just I've, work together. I've learned for years. I feel like uh, if you put up something for sale, even if it's your own thing, like your own shirt you'll get 10% of the sales of the people that say they're going to buy it. Like that's, that's pretty much guaranteed. It's, it's kind of like a Facebook invite. When you get a Facebook event invite, uh, 10% <laughs> of the people that say they're going are going to actually go. It's kind of the same deal. But, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm jaded at this point. So yeah, you ain't wrong. All right. Yeah. Uh, my, my next one is, uh, I know that we kind of make fun of people that, uh, use wrestling lingo in real life, but have you ever used a line from wrestling in real life with no irony? So today, I was kind of describing a project to my manager, and I dropped the line, I turned uh, chicken shit into chicken salad, and I didn't really think twice about it. And I was Is like, that man. wrestling? Yeah, Paul Heyman uses it a lot, and I like that line uh-huh. a lot, but I know it's definitely a wrestling line that, like, people in the biz use. So can you think of any examples where you do this in real life? I say that a lot, too, but I... I never knew it was from wrestling i mean maybe i did at one point and i just forgot but i do say that a lot uh i usually i don't say i don't think i say like any actual kitchen uh, kitchen phrases catch phrases but uh i do use the word gimmick a lot but not in the annoying way like a lot of people (laughs) use it but i still use it like it's it's a word i like so i'll use gimmick a lot but not like oh grab the gimmick over there if you're saying stuff like that just stop man like just that is that is cringy (laughs) but uh i will refer to things as a gimmick so 
Uh, I might even use angle every once in a while, but I use probably... angle sometimes. Yeah, I use angle. Yeah, but yeah, outside of that, like outside of saying jobber just for everything, like you know, like <laughs> that guy's a, like not for everything in life, but you know, like if you're watching UFC and you're you're trying to explain to somebody, you're like, yeah, that guy's a jobber. Like you know, they're just like a jobber team or something like that. But that's it. <laughs> All right, my last topic, which is kind of. I don't know. You can't really offer any feedback on it. Uh, so I guess today it was reported that Heath Slater and both of the Ascension got their car broken into today in Oakland. So I, uh, <laughs> I just like to congratulate all three of these people with being the virtual pros idiots of the week for uh, leaving <laughs> valuables out in, the, in plain view in your car. Like what a rookie mistake. Why would you do that? <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. If there's any life lessons you can pull from virtual pros, it's uh, put everything in your trunk. It'll work out better. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have a good amount. Um, first, I had an Instagram-related topic, too. I decided in these two-man scramble sections, I will start highlighting one of the people we actually follow. Oh, I'll shit. Probably ru- I'll probably like run out after like five, because, <laughs> you know, uh, I think there's five I like a lot. But this one, I think he's an unsung hero. I don't know what his deal is. I don't even know if it's a he. He could be a she. But it's Nobu dot Haya, and <laughs> I think Al started following this person. And yeah, all he or she, all he or she posts is deathmatch photos and uh, like the most elaborate, delicious looking pastries and chocolate I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> and it's just like it's such a good combination of things to be posting. And these pastries and, and chocolates he posts are just like fucking next level. They're so fancy. And uh, I just I just love that Instagram. It's probably one of my favorites that we follow. Well, I mean, Nobu spoil- da- oh, go ahead. Nobu dot Haya if you want to follow. <laughs> well, spoiler alert: he posts a lot of uh, Mont Blanc, which is the uh, flavor that yeah. one Togi Makabe uh, drew inspiration from for his chips. So I kind of feel a certain way about those desserts because uh, if they taste like if those chips are like indicative of how Mont Blancs taste, uh, those desserts are gross. Uh, I just wanted to say I'm also a chocolate maniac, and he's been posting pictures of chocolates with rose petals in them, and I just I can't even imagine, man. Like, <laughs> I, I need to go to Japan. If these things are only found in Japan, I need to go there as soon as possible. Uh, next up, I wanted to make a little correction from last episode. We talked briefly about Queen's Quest, and Al revealed to me that two of, <laughs> out of the three of them, everybody except Io Shirai was underage, and I had I got a weird feeling in my stomach. Not a sexual feeling. But, like, maybe I should not watch Stardom anymore. Uh, that is too, one too many underage girls in a, in a stable. And then I, I had to do some fact checking. And it turns out the sassy one is actually 19. So she's not underage. However, I just saw, like, yesterday, they added the Azumi girl who is, like, legit 13 or 14 years old. So uh, I don't know what to do. How do you, did you see that she was added to it, Al? How do you feel about this? Yeah, I saw that uh, she joined she joined Queen's Quest, and she's now going by AZM. I guess that's the uh, heel way to announce yourself. If you're going to yeah. turn heel, just take all the vowels out of your name. But yeah, they replaced one underage person with another, and I did think of Oh, they kicked happened. the other girl out? Well, she's injured, Momo Watanabe, so they had oh, to okay. find a replacement, so... Oh, okay. So it's... Okay. So the underage quota is still one, then, so it's not as bad. Okay. Yeah, it's two, I it's two to one legal... Th- yeah, it's fine. Yeah. That's well, fine. they announced Io Shirai, Shayna Baszler. That Gork and Hall uh, event is looking kind of good. Just saying. Yeah, I'll, pr- I'll probably definitely watch that. Uh, oh, yeah, I went to NXT Albany. And honestly, I went with friend and listener to the show, Joe. And honestly, I don't really have that much to report. Uh, it was a house show. It was NXT in Albany. It was cold. Um all, they, they always do it at the Albany Armory when they do NXT, and it sucks because Albany Armory got their liquor license taken away because somebody got stabbed <laughs> at Amigo show a few years ago, and like <laughs> what? So yeah, and like that happened, and then they were just like, "We're gonna take your liquor license away. That's your punishment." And I think maybe they don't book hip hop shows anymore, but outside of that, it's still open. So it sucks because like I did not drink enough before uh, we we got in there, and like. It was so sad. I went up to the concession stand just to see maybe they got their liquor license reinstated. And this place is like so dumpy. Like, uh, quickly, the armory was a place that was like open in the 80s in Albany and then it closed down until like, I don't even know, like 2008 or something. So it still looks like the 1980s inside of it. 
So um, even like on their dry erase board, they still had like the beer prices and they just like never washed the dry erase board in the, la- in the past three years since they lost their license. So I was like, oh, maybe they do have beer, but no, nope, they don't have any. So I've noticed that my enjoyment of live wrestling is really conducive to how much I can drink now, which is not a really good thing, but it's a fun thing. And so this wasn't like the best time I've ever had at wrestling. Um, I will say I didn't see anybody with replica belts. That's not saying they weren't there, but I didn't see them. I saw like one, I saw a kid with one, but it's a kid. So it's okay. Uh, I thought this, I thought this was going to be the fight, the finally the time I would get an Oscar shirt because I waited again in line for an hour like last time. And, uh, they actually had Oscar shirts and I get up there and they're like, no, we don't have that size. And I was like, oh, cool. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> let me, so I bought the dumb Oscar mask and, uh, <laughs> it's not even the cool bloody one. It's the dumbest one out of the three I think she has. And, um, I wanted to like see if I can make my jowl stick out of the side of it, but I can't. <laughs> it's, it's pretty big. I have like a pretty big pit bull head as it is, but like I was not, I'm still not big enough to like stick stick my gels out of the sides so it's kind of worthless big worthless ten dollar piece of crap uh there are a lot of people live that do the 10 chant for every single count and if you think it's annoying on tv who boy it is real annoying in real life um and it's not even like i would say it's more pavlovian than it is like from the soul yeah and that kind of uh bums me out even more and makes me hate ty dillinger even more (laughs) <laughs> and um he obviously wrestled but i thought of a way in a constructive way i thought of a way for me to actually like ty dillinger and it and it's if when he go, comes up to wwe eventually uh they'll they kind of tweak the 10 gimmick where it turns out uh he says 10 all the time because he actually has crippling ocd and he has to do everything 10 times. <laughs> so like so like before every match starts he like t- laces up his boots 10 times and just like does like he makes the ref check his, check his boots 10 times and uh like he'll do like he'll swing somebody the ropes 10 times. Like if they did that, uh, he would be my favorite wrestler ever. And I think it would stop the 10 chance. So Vince, Stephanie, Triple H, you're out there listening. Um uh, I have I have the solution to your problems. Let's stop these stupid 10 chance. And yeah, I, there was a point where I think during intermission, they uh, showed a picture of Roman Reigns on the screen and everybody booed. And it's like, seriously, yeah. it's like, do all of you people really statistically hate this man? Like, fucking calm down. It's so dumb. Uh, but, you know, outside of that, it was fun. I got to see Tommy End. I got to see Shinsuke Nakamura, like, pretty up close and personal because when I last time I saw him I was in Brooklyn and I was very far away. I did not get to sniff Asuka's hair. I was not that Damn. close. Yeah. Ma- you could have, though. Just, you could have. Yeah. Next time, I just got to get front row. It's just a, just a <laughs> sniff. But, uh, yeah, so that was NXT Albany. It was fun. I don't know if I'm going to go again next year because it seems to happen once a year, but we'll see. Uh, there was, this seems like ancient history now. There was a 30 for 30 on the XFL a couple weeks ago, and it was kind of a notable thing. This is also kind of a non-wrestling topic with a little wrestling slant. But, uh, of course, people were asking Dave Meltzer if the WWE Network would put XFL games on their network. And he was like, no, dude, that's fucking dumb as hell. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people with their en- entitled attitudes, you know, actually, like, wanted to huff and puff about it as if it's unbelievable that you would not put old, boring football <laughs> on your network. Uh, I live through these games, and they are fucking boring. They are horribly, <laughs> horribly played football games. No one wants to see this shit again. If you want to see it bad enough, I'm sure there's clips on YouTube. Don't fucking whine and cry like a baby because <laughs> somebody doesn't want to use like server space to store the fucking XFL games. Jesus Christ. But I wanted to know, Al, what do you think is the worst sport to watch uh, when it's played very badly? On a professional level, not like played very badly by amateurs. Jeez, it's kind of a tough one. Well, well I'll tell you mine. I can tell you mine. What you think? Mine is actually football because, and my reasoning is, um, well, first, baseball to me, even if it's played badly, that that makes baseball more interesting to me because that means like errors and stuff, and like I think regular baseball is boring unless it's like playoffs or something. Um, 
hockey and basketball are always moving. So, I mean, you know, 75% of the time they're moving. So even when it's bad, it's, there's still like motion going on. But football is, has to be the worst because if it's played badly, there's like no momentum at all. And it, there's pauses, you know, like every few seconds. So it's just like, it is like the, I think it's such a slog to watch when it's played horribly. So football hands down for me. That's for sure. Okay. I have a good answer for this. So I've been a Kings fan my whole life. <laughs> and so these past 15 years, I've watched bad basketball. And so watching uh, DeMarcus Cousins just fucking lose his composure or watching them like not being able to run simple plays um, on both a fan level and both like on an aesthetic level has been so frustrating for me for the past 15 years. So basketball is my answer here, uh, although okay, they are picking enough. it up. But uh man. Watching the Kings. I've seen some shit, man. <laughs> okay, got a couple more left. Um, I recently bought the Ryback book on Kindle because it's 99 <laughs> cents. I don't know if it's still 99 cents or if it was a glitch in the Matrix or something, but I got it for 99 cents, and I was so happy. I was like, oh, my God, we're going to have content for the podcast for at least 20 episodes. And I opened it the night I got it to read it. I didn't get the physical book. I got the Kindle book. I but so I open the file or whatever. And um, this is the most poorly written book I've ever like looked at in my life. Like I can't even call anything from it to like read a passage because it's so bad. It's written like very stream of consciousness, but not in a good way at all. Just like kind of it's just like if somebody it's kind of like the if you guys watched Eastbound and Down, it's kind of like when Kenny Powers is writing his book, quote unquote, where he's just like talking to himself in a mic in a, on, into a recorder. Uh, that's how I believe Ryback's book was written because it's, it's pretty much written like that. There's nothing I could take from it. I don't think this book could help anybody in the world. Like, I don't even know if you could decipher it unless you have like some kind of mush brain or something that, uh, just, I don't know. It's just impossible to follow. So do not recommend, not even for 99 cents. Don't check out the Ryback book. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Wraith Barf- uh, Bartholomew for the retweet. So the chapter that you posted was uh, Ryback talking about the importance of us educating our kids, I think it was. Yes. Like, does he just write about, like, all kinds of random things, like, in chapter format like this? Like, does he give his take on, like, what, like, kinds of breakfasts you should have? Like, how is his book organized, I guess, is my question. Yeah. I'm, I'm opening it now, but, yeah, it's very much um, kind of like a person who wants to read wants to write a book that has never actually read a book it's pretty much that kind of style like okay so it's broken up into chap sections and then chapters in those sections so the first section is health and it's like taking care of our bodies uh is a chapter caffeine is a chapter uh eating for our blood type fast food oh hell no uh speaking of which ryback yeah. constantly <laughs> speaks on his podcast about just like downing mcdonald's just like he said when he goes on an overseas flight he'll buy like 80 dollars worth of mcdonald's <laughs> before he leaves to take on a fucking plane so uh whatever ryback um the second section is inspiration and attitude being thankful society today destructive criticism um ego is our friend and enemy Section three is self-improvement. This has social media, setting goals, time management, focus, et cetera, et cetera. Section four is relationships, which <laughs> only only has three sec- only has three chapters. So I <laughs> does not know a lot about relationships. Uh, and one of the one of the uh, chapters is love your animals. So there you go. Section five is money, and this is a few chapters about money. Section six is personal responsibility, and then it's closing thoughts. And uh, yeah, do, I do not recommend this. That is a terrible book. <laughs> is the uh, uh, section regarding uh, destructive criticism just him talking shit about John Cena? It is no, it's not. It is uh, talking. It, it is. It is something about like not paying attention to like your Twitter haters or something like that, though. <laughs> it's there's a lot of like social media like Twitter talk on this, and it's just like, dude, you can't write a book like this. This is this is real bad. Um, my last topic isn't that interesting. I just watched that uh, New Beginning Okada Suzuki match. Yeah. And and I watched the one after that, which I think that card was probably a lot better. But I wouldn't say a lot, but I enjoyed it more. But um that I've never seen I've saw Minoru Suzuki like a couple of years ago when like the last Wrestle Kingdom he was at, but outside of that I don't really follow the guy or anything. 
And uh, he's an old man, and he looks evil, like a real fucking piece of shit asshole who really fuck up your day. And uh, I just think he has a cool gimmick because, like, he looks like that, and he's old enough to still go for 40 minutes. This match is like 40 plus minutes. Although, 10 minutes of it was a leg lock, which I had to actually check to see if maybe I hit rewind on the thing, and I was just <laughs> watching the same part over and over again or something because it was so long. But... I just wanted to say that if uh, you are an independent wrestler in America and you were getting up in age, I would say to to mimic this guy because I think this guy's gimmick is ripe to be taken in America, and I think it's so good. I think he has a great gimmick, and I just love it, and I just wanted to state that. Wait, so you're talking about the most recent card where the main event was Naito and uh, Michael Elgin? Yeah, that was the new beginning, the most recent one, and the the one the week before that was Okada and Suzuki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess uh, uh, going on the Minoru Suzuki uh, lane, yeah, that guy wrestles a perfect style. It's pretty low impact. It's a lot of him trying to lock you up into choke holds and leg locks, and I don't think that takes a big toll on your body. So, yeah, if you're getting up in age, why not do yeah. the style? And he looks like, like, he just looks like such a piece of, like... I don't know. He just looks like a mean old, like old Yakuza man or something. So it's just like, it's perfect. Yeah, it's great. Well, okay. Did you see the Dragon Lee Hiromu match? Yes, it was. It was. It was something. It's <laughs> so like I don't understand how these guys are alive because they've wrestled this match like maybe a couple times, and like yeah. this most recent one, like the bumps in this match were incredible. Like the power bomb that Hiromu hits on uh, Dragon Lee was pretty ridiculous. It's kind of like deathmatch wrestling without the props. Like they're just trying yeah. to like really fuck each other up. When Dragon so, Lee's head goes into like the guardrail and the fucking the, yeah, <laughs> like oh my god, man, it's this dude's are crazy. Up. And so I guess the reason why I bring this up is like, do you feel a little guilty? Like we know a little more about CTE these days, and like when I watch those matches, like I mean, it has an effect on me. But I don't, I don't know if it's like the most desired one. Actually, I feel a little guilty watching it sometimes. I don't feel that bad. I know, like, Dave Meltzer talked about this match, and he had he talked about it like he was, like, eulogizing somebody. Just like, oh, <laughs> I hate to see these guys, like, they're going to ruin their careers. They're going too fast, and their careers are going to be over in three years and stuff like that. And, I mean, I understand, like, it's, it's definitely uh, a bad thing, but it doesn't affect my life. So I hate to, hate to sound selfish like that, but, I mean, <laughs> like... These guys have to know the risks deep down. I mean, they're young, and when you're young, you just think you're invincible. But still, it's like, I don't know, man. If that that's how they want to go out, then fine. But yeah, they're gonna they're gonna fucking kill each other. I guess they're consent. Uh, I guess they're consenting adults, man. I guess that's all you can really say. Yeah, not uh, to talk for too long, but yeah, like uh, every but like a bunch of people were talking about the Naito Michael Elgin match, like it was like one of the greatest matches ever. And I thought it was really good. I but and I just thought there was way too many kickouts in it, and so and like I thought that Dragon Lee match really overshadowed it. So I don't know. Like, did you did you think that too? So I tried to watch it live and I fell asleep for the main event. Uh, so okay. I need to rewatch it. But that card was pretty good. Like I thought the Dragon yeah, Lee Hiroma yeah. match was good. I was kind of hoping the Osprey uh, Shibata match would be a little better. I thought it was good, but like not as good like as I built it up in my head. What'd I thought that was match? pretty awesome. Just, yeah, I thought that one was good just because it was like short and it was unexpectedly short. And I can't remember. Will Ospreay did something in that match or maybe. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, but it was fucking ridiculous just as always. All right. Up next, uh, favorite instances of Grap's love. What love connections made these two hard rocks smile? Please stay tuned. Back when I was nothing, you made a brother feel like he was something. 
That's why I'm with you to this day, boo, no frontin'. Even when the skies were gray, you would rub me on my back and say, baby, it'll be okay. Now that's real to a brother like me, baby. Never ever get my cootie away and keep it tight, alright? And I'ma walk these doors so we can live. In a fat ass crib with thousands of kids. Well, like, you don't need a ring to be my wife. Just be there for me and I'ma make sure we be living in the effing lap of luxury. I'm realizing that you didn't have to fuck with me, but you did. Now I'm going all out, kid, and I got mad love to give you, my nigga. Okay, we're back here on Virtual Pros, and it is Valentine's Day, so we thought we'd have a nice romantic topic for our main segment. Uh, so we're going to talk about love and wrestling, and I will say I sabotaged my own topic. I suggested this topic to Al, and I think I presented it as, uh, how about we just talk about our favorite couples in wrestling? Yeah. And for so- some reason, in my brain, just thought something else, so... All of mine are more like feuds started because of couples instead of like, <laughs> you know, just like, you know, just like bare bones couples because I don't think that's as interesting to talk about. So uh, all mine have to do with like feuds and why they are memorable to me. Well, but, shit, uh, you- I, I actually stuck to the topic. So mine are just going to be yeah. super lame now. Thanks a lot. I, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I should have told you, but. I kind of like just had this revelation last night where I was like, oh, Al probably didn't think of what I was thinking. But either way, um, it's just shit that stuck out of my mind. And the first one, of course, is Macho Man and Miss, Miss Elizabeth. Yeah. And um, the feud that stuck out of my mind was with George the Animal Steel. I was very young when this happened. Uh, Macho Man was still a bad guy. George the Animal Steel was still a good guy. And... I liked George the Animal Steel because he was a good guy, and I was really little, and he seemed like very entertaining. But there, they had this feud where, like, he was trying to steal Miss Elizabeth away from the Macho Man, and yeah. even at that, even at that very young young age, I wouldn't say I thought it was creepy because I didn't really know the concept of creepy at the time. But I knew there was something immoral about that, like this kind of special man, the specially touched man, uh, <laughs> trying to steal away a woman from another man. And portrayed as the good guy in this feud, and even I had a moral dilemma at that very young age where, where it, just did, it just did not add up to me. So as far as instances of love and wrestling, that was like the first thing that really ever hit me. Uh, also pretty much the um, when Macho Man was uh, choosing his manager, they did like this big spiel where he was like talking to every manager in the uh the wwf at the time and then at the end he introduces elizabeth and that that was like mind-blowing because she was a lady and you didn't see ladies in uh as managers back then so that was amazing but more so the george the animal steal whole creepy i'm gonna steal away miss elizabeth thing was real (laughs) weird to see as like a four or five or six year old or however old i was okay uh kind of going on the same wave um i just went with like couples that i thought were pretty admirable and uh, maybe the second one I went with, just to kind of relate to your story about uh, George the Animal Steel and Miss Elizabeth, uh, one of my favorite couples was uh, Al Wilson and Don Marie. Shout out to the other Al. Um, <laughs> so just like George the Animal Steel and uh, Miss Elizabeth, I kind of feel like this relationship kind of teaches you the all-important lesson of just shooting your shot. Like Al Wilson <laughs> like is clearly like an old dad, you know? While yeah. Don Marie is like a fox, and he's like, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to go for it. Uh, I guess the downside of this is like he totally didn't care about what his daughter thought about this whole thing, which is kind of fucked daughter, up. daughter, by the way. His hot daughter, Tori Wilson. Yeah. But I mean, hey, it's kind of hard to explain what the heart wants, right? Yeah, um, the heart wants what the heart wants. The heart wants what the heart wants. And so I was kind of trying to refresh my memory about this whole angle. <laughs> And uh, if you have some time on your hands, you should type in Al Wilson, uh, Don Marie, not while you're at work. But there's <laughs> <laughs> there's this clip of um, Tori Wilson looking for her dad in, backstage. And he finds his, her dad in the shower, fully clothed with Don Marie naked. And uh, I don't think, like, I found a funnier clip this year. It is amazing. Like, why is Al Wilson fully clothed in the shower? I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, also, to spoil that whole, en- uh, whole angle... <laughs> 
he ends up dying from a from that's what's so, yeah so my man al he went out a legend because he died of a heart attack after smashing too much during his honeymoon <laughs> so it's kind of like a lovely way to wrap up that relationship i feel like those are the old the old the good old days of wrestling i also <laughs> always liked i always liked don marie because she looked like a hot mom even she, when she was like probably 22 like she's just always looked like a really hot mom so uh i was super always into that yeah, you uh, my, <laughs> my next <laughs> one is um, uh, it's a little love triangle between Jake the Snake and his wife and R- Ravishing Rick Rude. Um, are you familiar with this this angle? No, you're you're talking uh, about it, and like I can't I can't really think about like what okay. happened. Is did he like put like Jake's wife's like face yes. on his tights? Okay, yes. got you, got you. So yeah, he started like hitting on her in the crowd. Ravishing Rick Rude did. And I think she's like, you know, fuck off or whatever. And she's like, I'm married. And I think Rick Rude says something like, oh, who are you married to? And she's like, Jake Roberts or something like that. And it's like, oh. <laughs> and then, yeah, ultimately, you know, so they're like beefing over this. And ultimately, uh, like Rick Rude comes out for a match. And hello, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Rick Rude comes out for a match and he reveals his tights. And he has Jake the, Ro- Jake the Snake Roberts face painted on his crotch on his uh, airbrushed tights and yeah i thought that was like the most bad i mean i still think it's one of the most ruthless wrestling moves in the history of wrestling (laughs) like you cannot like it would be you cannot ether somebody that hard in wrestling i don't think like (laughs) it's definitely like it has to be the like the top three just horribly like ruthless things done in wrestling to me and i've never forgotten that that And like Ric Flair, like saying he had the nudes on Macho Man's like girl. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. shit, super ruthless. Yeah. yeah, so that's just like I'm surprised. Oh wait, no, Dolph Ziggler did it with with Lana, and it was corny. But yeah, um, and and it was just like the aspect. Like at that point, I knew wrestling was fake, but it was still like I was like, maybe this is real because like, <laughs> she was in the crowd, you know. And that's what made it even more impactful that she wasn't a wrestling character, and he was still like, yeah, she's on my dick. It was uh. <laughs> I wonder if those those tights ever like show up on eBay. There's probably no way. They're probably in a museum somewhere. But if I be. had, a, yeah, if I had to own like a really frivolously expensive <laughs> piece of uh, wrestling like memorabilia, <laughs> it would definitely be Rick Rude's fucking crazy tights. That's for sure. Yo, these tights are Sabu's pants. What do you go with? If they were the Rick Rude, Jake the Snake Roberts airbrushed uh, wife tights, definitely. I think that has to be like the greatest piece of wrestling merch to me. I think. <laughs> uh okay were you done yeah okay so uh when you first proposed this topic i don't know why it popped in my head but it was like clearly my my first pick and i can't really rationalize why and like while i was typing out my notes i was like man this is actually kind of fucked up but it kind (laughs) of highlights that uh true love perseveres and it's uh the relationship between one tommy dreamer and one beulah mcgilligutty so I guess the backstory is that uh, Tommy Dreamer and Raven, uh, they met Beulah at summer camp, right? And I guess Dreamer passed on her because she was fat, even though Beulah was in love with him. And like, yep. I guess it was never really revealed that Dreamer told her that to her face. Like, if he did, that's fucking ruthless. But <laughs> I don't know. Never, never was disclosed, right? So I guess as revenge, like uh, Beulah hooked up with Raven, and I guess she like got on her workout game. And she like turned in like she like turned into like this penthouse model. Uh shout out to if you if you saw these pics in ninety eight, like you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then like uh these she came back, right, for like more revenge by being Raven's valet. And like in turn she like ate some pile drivers by Dreamer. Uh which by the way is like activity we at virtual pros don't condone. <laughs> and so like it's later revealed that Beulah's pregnant, right? And it's not with Raven, but it's with Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> Which kind of goes with this overarching thing of, theme of like, you know, the heart wants what it wants, right? So even though like Tommy Dreamer passed on her because she was fat, like she still wanted it with Tommy, right? Mm-hmm. So man, uh, so like later on, Beulah would like kind of go on to like beat the absolute fuck out of Bill Alfonso, I think on behalf of Tommy Dreamer. And, uh, he also, or she also let him cook with her and Kimono Wanalea, which is kind of tight. Uh, I had one question for you though. So they're married in real life. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm guessing Tommy knew that she like did those like magazine spreads before they got together. How would you I feel she, if like you like, go ahead. No, I'm pretty sure was, 
No, she wasn't. I th- yeah, I think she was. She was that magazine spread was also like a straight up porn. I think. Oh I yeah, don't th- it for sure yeah. was. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, so he knew. Yeah, he had to know about it, obviously. Like, how would you feel if like you were dating someone at work and like all your coworkers like knew that your girl had the nudes out? <laughs> I, you know, I think wrestling is not too, it's not, it's not that farly separated from the pornography industry. So yeah. I don't think it's a big deal if you're a wrestler. It's a little different if, you know, you're working in an office somewhere and everybody <laughs> knows, but I think in wrestling, it's fine. You might be right. Yeah. You're up next. Uh, well, my last one was actually the same thing. It was specifically the, uh, that, that whole angle where uh, Raven finds out that, or, Beul- yeah, Raven finds out Beulah is cheating on her with Tommy, and then Tommy Dreamer finds out that Beulah has been cheating on him with Kimona Wona Leia. Yeah, and and uh, it leads to the pivotal scene at some pay per view. I think something 1996, one of those pay per views, maybe ho- Hardcore Homecoming. I don't remember. <laughs> is that even is that even a fucking pay per view? I don't know. I don't remember the names. Um, I think Hardcore uh, Homecoming was like after ECW died. Okay. It's yeah. hardcore. Everything had hardcore in it. But that's my point. So it ends with them like revealing it and uh they start they start kissing on each other, Kimona and Beulah, and Tommy Dreamer grabs them both by the uh the back of their heads and kisses <laughs> on both of them yeah. and says, uh, I'll take them both. I'm hardcore. And even at that point in time, I was like, this is one of the most embarrassing moments in the history of wrestling. <laughs> I know, I know it was supposed to, like, I know it was supposed to be sexy and hot, but it's not, man. Like it, you know, back then it was at least hot, but it was still very cringy. It just seems like such an old guy thing to say, even back then to be like, I'm hardcore. I'll take them both. And, uh, it was, it's just, uh, if I had to pick a certain parts that of ECW that makes me feel sleazy and bad, it's definitely that. Even more than Kimono Wanalea dancing atop the ECW arena. That is artistic, but the other Yeah, I agree. Just, the other thing's sleazy. Yeah, it's like definitely like a Duke Nukem line or some shit. Like it's yeah. not that cool to hear. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll get to it later on in Two Man Scramble, but I don't know, just off topic. Do you think Kimono Wanalea and Beulah hold up like in 2017? Oh, I saw Beulah a few months ago. Uh, yeah. She definitely let herself go. I'm, you know, she's oh, an older no. woman, so I'm not gonna, yeah, that's like, fine. Ra- yeah, rag on her. But she's definitely like, she looks like she's married to Tommy Dreamer now instead of before, where you're just like, what's going on? What's going on? Here? <laughs> Although I will say, like, I, I'll look at like young Tommy Dreamer matches, like when he was real young, and I'm like, oh, he's kind of a hunk back then. But yeah, he definitely sure. like, he definitely like just like once you know he got up in age, he just looks like an old landscaper or something. Yeah, like uh, Suspenders Tommy Dreamer. It's a good looking Yeah, dude. yeah. He was, yeah, uh, definitely very hunky. Uh, <laughs> my last one. Who would have thought that Tori Wilson would be some kind of conduit for love? But uh, my last one is Tori Wilson and Tajiri. That's my favorite. I don't remember couple. this at all. Oh, uh, this is like 07. Like, no one really knows, but I vaguely remember <laughs> it because of like. So, you know, it's not like Jet Lee landing Aaliyah at the end of Romeo Must Die, but it's kind <laughs> of like a win for uh, the Asian men out there. Like, if you are Asian, you know what I'm talking about. Like, read up on Asian men and, like, desexualization in the media and stay woke. Uh, by the way, <laughs> fuck Steve Harvey. So, like, I feel like this teaches the all-important lesson of love having no color, which is apparent when we learn that uh, Tori Wilson became fluent in Japanese during uh, that segment where Tajiri's directing uh, a Japanese shampoo commercial. So, I was like, man, she learned an entire language because she liked Tajiri that much. Props, right? Also, yeah. Tajiri gets props for dating someone that's, like, clearly two feet taller than he is, like, barefoot. <laughs> like, I've only really dated, like, Asian chicks, and so, like, I've never really had the feeling of dating someone 5'11". You know, it's not in our science. So, like, when I saw that, I was like, damn, Tajiri's fucking doing it out here. Um, I will say, though, that this didn't end all that well because uh, I guess a lot of wrestlers backstage were given the googly eyes of Tori Wilson... And uh, Tajiri was getting a little salty, uh, so as punishment, he made her dress up like a geisha, and like he was always shoving her around, and it was kind of fucked up. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty bad. So uh, it started well, didn't end well, but I mean, it is kind of a landmark for the Asian bros out there. So Tori Wilson, Tajiri, I kind of wish it worked out better for you two. Yeah. Uh, I gotta, I gotta dip into this on the WWE Network. I completely missed this. 
it's shaky. Um, <laughs> that was our topic regarding love and wrestling. If you have any suggestions or if you want to share uh, your favorite couples, hit us yeah. at Virtual Pro. If you want to share when you when you pr- propose to your wife at a wrestling event, just uh, <laughs> hit us up at virtualpro64 at gmail.com. Yeah, let us know how much that cost. Uh, <laughs> up next, <laughs> up next is I the mixtape. My drink like a cartoon. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> up next, Bull Nakano, Manami Toyota, Lucha Underground, and Crazy Frank. Please <laughs> stay tuned. You can't keep running. We're back with the Valentine's Day episode of the Virtual Pros Podcast, episode 36. If you haven't already, hit us on virtual, <laughs> hit us on Twitter and Instagram at VRTL Pros. Oh, by the way, I think we're 14 away from our YouTube subscriber limit, or not limit, but Hell the yeah. number that we need to get to. So 14 more. Just, just follow us, man. Like we need it. We want that custom URL. Yeah. Um, I have, oh, wait, Mike has first. Yeah, I'm going first. I'm going to go first. God damn it. So this is Valentine's Day. So I was like, I should probably pick a lady match. And yeah. I didn't want to go too out of my wheelhouse because every time I pick a Japanese lady match, it's kind of a dud. And I'm just like, fuck, man. I thought all <laughs> these were great, but they're not all that great. You know, some of them are just whatever. Uh, yeah. So I was like, I'll, I'll stick to something I know. So I stuck to Lucha Underground. Uh, this is Sexy Star versus Mariposa. And this was from May 4th of last year. And, um, this was also an I quit match. And I saw this match. I very rarely get to watch. Well, now I can watch it, but back then I very rarely got to watch, uh, Lucha Underground in real time because I was always recording a podcast on Wednesdays. And, uh, so I think this was like one of the first ones of that season I got to see in real time. So I was real pumped. And it turned out like this was the main event, and I was kind of like, "That's not a very good main event." I love Sexy Star, but she's you know she's kind of spotty sometimes in her wrestling. So I was like, "Man, this is this might be a drag." But uh, Lucha Underground proved me wrong again because I ended up loving this match and it ended up being one of my favorite matches of that season. And uh, I will say, you know, I don't wasn't as pumped for it the second time around. Like I don't, I think I remembered it more fondly than it was, but. I think it's still, <coughs> excuse me, I still think it's still a great match. Uh, the first thing you'll notice about this match is your airs are just awash with horrible commentary by Matt Stryker <laughs> and Vampiro. It's, it's such a detriment. Like, it, Lucha Underground has so many things stacked against them, it seems, all the time and gaining popularity. And the fact that one of the first things you hear are these two guys talking is just, it's just the, uh, it's really the pits. At one point, um, during the match, Matt Stryker says, that's a human being, that's someone's daughter, and that is something me and my friends used to say to each other as a joke, because <laughs> it's like, kind of, I don't, I want to, I don't know if it's condescending is the word, but saying that somebody's daughter is just like the corniest shit, and it just seems like you're, like, demeaning that person and, like, turning them into an object, basically. Maybe I'm interpreting it wrong, but I know, we used to just always say it as a joke, and for him to say it in commentary, it's just like, I don't know, man. This guy's the worst. Uh, and, you know, I'm not like a snob like most people when it comes to wrestling commentary. I just want you to be fine. Just be okay. Be mediocre at your job, and I'm fine. But when you're just, like, in your face bad, it kind of sucks. Uh, uh, Sexy Star is wearing a kind of, like, skirt that is, like, kind of like a cheerleader skirt where it's short and, like, you know, kind of frilly and... 
Uh, so it comes with the, uh, the under part, the tights or the underpants <laughs> part of the, the skirt. I don't know if it has a fucking formal name. Either way, what I'm getting at, it's sort of flesh colored and that's a bad, that's a bad look. Like, I know it's not flesh colored. She's just, you know, she's a butter pecan and like the, the, <laughs> the underpants are like that kind of like butter pecan too. So it's just like, I don't know. She looks like a Barbie doll from the waist down. It's weird. Um, so this match starts and it's kind of just a brawl for a while, a, a woman brawl. And then, uh, after a while, she, uh, Mari Posa, who's cheerleader Melissa, if you're a fan of lady wrestling and, and that means anything to you. Um, they're like brawling, brawling all over the temple and cheerleader Melissa drags sexy star up the stairs, which looks horrible, by the way. That would suck to have to do. And, uh, at some point in this, like, brutalizing, she, she busts Sexy Star open. And when I first watched this, I was like, there's no way that blood is real. But now I'm not so sure. Al, do you think this blood was real? Yeah, I think she did cut herself, man. Okay. I don't know. It just looked really, like, the way it was on her body, like, it just looked fake. It looked syrupy, like corn syrup or something, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this time around, I was like, maybe that is actual real blood. Uh, were you bothered by the blood, Al? Were you like, this is too gruesome? <laughs> I don't want to talk about my real feelings about how this... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it was just whatever. I don't know. I didn't really okay. think e- either or about it. Uh, they uh, tease a scaffold spot. Like, they climb up the lighting rig, and they're, like, up there brawling, and you're expecting this huge spot, and nothing happens. <laughs> they just yeah, walk yeah, back yeah. down it, and it's never brought up again, and it's just like, oh, it kind of sucks. Uh, there's a Willie Mac cameo in this. I, he's my favorite Lucha Underground wrestler. And he, he lives on the West Coast and he hardly ever, I, I hardly ever see, like, really never see him on a wrestling event on the East Coast. And he's in some, he's in, on some upcoming high, or upcoming wrestling event in like some high school that's like a charity or something in Connecticut. And it's just like one of those Bobo wrestlings. So don't really want to go to that. I just wish he would be on the East Coast and like real independent wrestling, I guess. Uh, so Willie Mack, if you listen to this, you should come out to like Evolve or something. You should, you should, if Evolve listens to this, just work it out. I want to see Willie Mack live. He's the best. What's up, Gabe? Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, my final note is there's a part where Mavi Posa gets sexy star in a, a half crab or a, I don't know. It might even be a sharpshooter. Who the fuck cares? I'm not a nerd. I don't fucking remember this stuff. <laughs> Um, and they, you know, it's a, it's an I quit match. So they're doing the, the mic gimmick. And I will say, uh, that's something I didn't write down, but for an I quit match, I think the, one of the worst parts about the I quit match is excessive sticking the microphone in people's faces. And this is pretty good. Like they only do it a few times. So it's pretty great. Uh, but yeah, she gets the mic stick in her, stuck in her face and she just goes, fuck you. And it's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's one of my notes so, too. Yes, it's one of the fucking greatest parts of the history of Lucha Underground. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Uh, I It sucks that more people can't do that on TV because you're not allowed to say fuck you in WWE, but it's fucking great. So while, you know, I don't even know if this would make the top 10 best matches of all time in Lucha Underground, but it is a very notable match and I enjoyed it. it enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed it. What did you think, Al? Yeah, so Mariposa, she's rocking a Mankind mask, and I think that's kind of cool. Uh, she's uh, also rocking Argyle print, which is not that cool, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I guess a cool juxtaposition of looks. Um, I think I heard a Fight Forever chant when Sexy Star did that chair spot where she put the chair in um, Mariposa's swimsuit area. Mm-hmm. And uh, chanting Fight Forever after this like might be more ghoulish than anything I could ever offer commentary-wise. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, probably not the best thing to chant after that happening. Okay, so my biggest beef with Lucha Underground is, like, I've only seen, like, maybe three hours tops of Lucha Underground. And, like, from what I've gathered, like, it's supposed to be happening, like, in another plane. Like, not on Earth or something like that. And so, <laughs> well, like... It's not Mortal Kombat, dude. It's it's, it seems like it's Mortal Kombat. That's what I feel like it should be, right? So, like, when Matt Stryker and Vampiro are talking about, like, Duke Drossy and great muda and psychology <laughs> and mma i'm like you can't pretend like that these people are fighting in a temple for like ancient aztec artifacts and still bring up duke drosi like you got to be consistent <laughs> like <laughs> you, you have to yeah i don't understand that's a very like, good point it's a very good point 
you can't do that. Like you're either that or the other thing. So there's like a bit of an identity problem with Lucha Underground, I feel like. That's why I'm, there's rumors that Jim Ross might have did Lucha Underground for a minute. And I was like, no, no way. That would be horrible. So uh, I'm glad at least Jim Ross didn't get roped into it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you kind of stole my thunder, but fuck you, Manny Posa. Like <laughs> clearly like one of the best things I've ever seen, like in wrestling. That was incredible. Um <laughs> So there was a moment in the match where a sexy star has Mariposa in a uh, rear naked choke. And I think Matt Stryker says, or maybe it's Vampiro. He was like, sexy star is too short. She doesn't have leverage. Um, I've watched MMA for like 20 something years <laughs> and that makes no fucking sense. Like if anything, you should have more leverage if you're shorter and doing like a choke. Like, yes, it doesn't work that way. Um, <laughs> I guess overall, this was a pretty fun brawl. Uh, I didn't mind it too much. It was pretty good. Great. Uh, um, so I was on the same wave as Mike. I picked two ladies, and uh, both are my Valentines, I will say. Uh, Paul Nakano versus Manami Toyota from 721-1990. Uh, I will say that the VHS quality is definitely a fair here. It's pretty muddy, <laughs> but you can still watch it. See, um, man, you're, just, you're just a strict judge of video quality, I think. <laughs> Yeah, this had a VG. You're a fucking bad trader, dude. Um, well, there's a good between fair and VG. There's a good. This is definitely at least a good. Nah, it's just a fair. Um, <laughs> so I think I touched upon it earlier with Beulah McGillaguddy, but like some like looks don't hold up. Like if I watch Baywatch in 2017, like those girls are like they're yeah. not as hot to me as like they were in 1996. Like Phoebe oh, that's Kate's for sure, man. Still when you amazed, look at, right? When you look at Sable now, you're just like, dude, come on. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like S- Sable, Marlena, I was like, man, I used to spend like space on my hard drive for these photos and now like, what was I thinking? <laughs> I was a really horny kid at 11. This is fucking yeah. gross. But no, it wasn't like, you know, they were sexy at that time, but now it's just like, eesh, eesh. <laughs> yeah. Like Phoebe Cates is still pretty hot to me. Like yeah. uh Ferris Bueller, that lady, she's still a babe. But Bull Nakano, Manami Toyota, definite babe still. Uh Nakano looks great with her hair laid out like Cat Williams. Like she should do that <laughs> more often. I'll call it like prom version Bull Nakano. She's just looking cracking, like in the pre the pre interview, whatever. Uh Mike, can you please rank the red belts for me between uh the All Japan women's, the stardom, and the universal title? What do you have them ranked at? Uh, definitely a universal title last. I don't hate it like other people do. I just, out of those three. Uh, I think the red star and belt's the only one I like. I think all the other ones look a little too cheesy. Huh. Uh, I think I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, they're all basically the same design, but <laughs> was one pink or something? There's one that's blue. Well, I had what? AJW number one because it had the chains on like the side plates, like it was like a fucking WBO boxing title. Oh yeah, I would yeah, I would say yeah, that's number one. Yeah, the all Japan. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there should be more chains on belts. Like it's a good look. <laughs> um, Manami Toyota, she comes out rocking a short denim jacket, and I feel like denim jackets are pretty much like an undefeated look when it comes to like women. Like if you're a girl and wear a denim jacket, chances are you're looking pretty good. Uh, Bull Nakano, uh, I think she's rocking an Alice Cooper shirt. I'm not into rock music like that, but I think that's Alice Cooper. Um, which is also kind of tight, I guess. Um, this match is 12 minutes long, and I think it's real, like, realistic in the sense that, like, this entire match is just Bull Nakano fucking up Manami Toyota. Like, she has, like, probably 80 pounds on her, and so this is totally how a fight like this should go. Um, there's a section where Bull Nakano is just kicking Toyota's head in, which is pretty rough. Um, I thought the pace of the match was great. Uh, the ending, which is fucking incredible. Like she hits Toyota with like its insane clothesline and then like a really ridiculous power bomb. Um, for 12 minutes of your time, I think it's really worth a watch. What'd you think? Uh, yeah, I was also wondering about that t-shirt. I don't know if it's Alice Cooper because I think the back has some, some Japanese on it. So it might be some Japanese rocker, but I might have Scott King of the Internet look into this because he's good with that <laughs> stuff. But, uh, either way. <laughs> I don't have many notes on this. My only real notes are that I said it before. I love these interviews. I would just love a compilation of all of the All Japan Women's pre-interviews because I think they're great. Like, I don't understand the language. I might learn Japanese if I just had a whole tape of all these interviews because they're great. 
Uh, well, Nakano is obviously talking in a bullying tone to the man and ends yeah. up pushing him. And he's just like so distraught over being pushed. It's fucking great. Uh, my other note is that the ring, I don't know if it's because of the good quality VHS or it's because that's what it really looks like. The ring looks really cool and it also looks very painful. Like it kind of looks like a like a waxed floor, and I don't know if that's just because of the tape quality or if it really is that kind of like that kind of surface. And yeah. uh, it made me just think that like I don't know, I don't know how these ladies take it. It's it's pretty if it's like that kind of surface, man. This, it looked very painful. And yeah, my only other note was that uh, this match gave me a pretty cool idea for a shirt that I'm going to talk about Al with. I just wanted to bring it up on the show to a build suspense and b because I'll just forget it by the morning if I don't bring it up and record it. So. <laughs> uh, spring, summer 17. Uh, the Bailey feet shirt, uh, for those that are asking, <laughs> is not going to happen. We're not going to do it. It's too many uh, colors. Uh, Mike's been really. arguing with me. like We can't do it. It's not good. Yeah, Al texted me. There's this artist who has 20,000 followers on Instagram. And he, he I think he does like actual comic book work. But he also draws women in their feet. Um and Al texted me a picture of Sasha Bank and her feet, and it like really <laughs> ruined my day. It was a real bummer. <laughs> yeah, uh, for those that haven't seen it, it's Sasha Banks, like, and like the perspective is just like uh, from her feet, <laughs> and uh, she's holding the boss chain with her toes. So yes, someone definitely and, like pulled her pud to it. It's really disturbing. And, and then after that, Al tweeted about me wanting to make this Bailey shirt, and it's a, a picture of Bailey's feet. And I was I was so like broken up over it, I didn't even come up with a reply because I was like, <laughs> I I don't care. This is so dark. Uh, so my first match, or my second match, I'm sorry, is yeah. uh, this was I don't know if this person listened to the show, but this guy Frank found this match. Uh, so thanks, Frank, if you listen to this. But this is something called AKE Wrestling in Mexico, and it is from July 31st, 2013. It is a man named Crazy Frank versus another man named Ultimo Unicornio. Um, there are many Wait, reasons I chose. Do you to think that this Frank is the guy in the video? Oh, the guy? No, no. Uh, this is a Frank from like a, a group, like a Facebook okay. group. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but you know, there's many reasons I chose this video. Uh, I guess the first one is because when you press play, you hear Corn's classic "Blind," and you see a camera just pointed at a curtain. And I'm like, this is pretty good. And to his credit, Ultimo, this is Ultimo. You'll find out this is Ultimo Unicornio's uh, entrance theme is Corn's "Blind," and to his credit, he waits until the are you ready part of corn's blind to actually come out of the curtain which is a solid 50 seconds probably uh so <laughs> so they're just playing the din -din 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 of the the corn song for 50 seconds uh once he comes out of the curtain it is revealed that they are in some kind of weird thing they're in some kind of weird room my first uh my first guess was a classroom and then my second guess was if you look on the wall there's a, a Mexican and a Korean flag. So I was like, maybe this is a Taekwondo <laughs> <Yeah>. studio. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my notes. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't even, like, maybe it's a Taekwondo studio. It doesn't really look like one. Uh, but so, so it's revealed that they're in some kind of Taekwondo studio with a bunch of cheers set up and a crowd. And that's it. There's no ring or anything. And I will have you know, it took me. Hello? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay, it took me a very long time to realize they had no intentions of wrestling in a ring. I don't know why. Like, <laughs> yeah, if it's Japan, if it's like, <laughs> if it's like, if it's like Japan, I, you know, I'm just like conditioned to it where I'm like, oh, it's weird. It's going to be something kooky. But this, I was just like, are, are they going to go through that door and the ring's going to be there? Like, what's going on? And then I'm like, oh, wait, <laughs> they're just going to wrestle on the floor like a bunch of savages. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, so then crazy Frank comes out. And Crazy Frank is just a guy named Frank in kind of like gas station coveralls, and they say crazy on the the back, and you're just like, oh, okay. I thought Crazy Frank would be the guy with the blind as the, the cover song, the entrance song. Uh, so then you're acclimated that they will be wrestling on the floor of a possible Taekwondo studio, 
And then another reason I chose this this uh, this video because I saw the time was 25 minutes, and I was like, something really interesting has to happen if uh, this is 25 minutes long. Not really. This is just two guys hardcore wrestling for fucking way too long in a poorly paced <laughs> hardcore match, and it's just like. They'll take plunder out of the back, and it'll just be like a few light tubes, and they'll do a spot through the light tubes, and it's just real bizarre. Um, trying to, uh, my notes are just all in different order. Uh, I've to the, its credit though, there are a lot of people at this thing, a lot of children, a lot of people super excited. There are more people at this than most independent wrestling promotions that actually have like rings and ring announcers and stuff. So <laughs> I give them credit. I did some research. They there's other matches. There's a there's a solid amount of AKE wrestling matches on YouTube. Uh they don't have many stars, but Damien six 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 has wrestled for them, and so is Halloween. But huh. they but every once in a while it seems that AKE wrestling gets in a, a venue with a ring. So uh there's only a couple cards of them in this weird Taekwondo studio. And, uh, there's one, one of the videos says Sabu. And I was like, whoa. And I was like, <laughs> I was about to, like, I just watched these a few hours ago. I was about to text you and be like, hold the phone. We're going to change the video. But it <laughs> turned out to just be some random dude named Sabu. Like, it wasn't really. Oh, that Sabu. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let me see. What else do I have here? There, like I said, there's lots of children. Uh, there is one, like, one of the first light tube spots. It's just one sad light tube just propped up against the wall. And the guy like barrels through it, and it's like, dude, that wouldn't even hurt me, and I'm a baby. <laughs> like, like, you're a big burly wrestler. Like, it doesn't look like it hurts. Uh, they brawl like through the crowd. Like, there's a lot of crowd work of these guys like ramming into the crowd and even hitting them with chairs. I think the people they hit with chairs were like in in on it. Hopefully, but uh, <laughs> at one point, uh, crazy Frank seemingly wipes his bloody face on somebody's shirt. I would sue. Like, I would just immediately <laughs> sue. I'd be like, this is a traumatizing experience. What the fuck, man? That is somebody's blood. That is gross. So hopefully that was like his cousin or something, because I don't think you could just wipe your blood on somebody's shirt and then be cool nah, with it. I don't, no <laughs> I don't way. care. What, that sucked. I don't, I, don't, I don't care who you are. Uh, finally, after 25 very long, stressful minutes of hardcore wrestling inside of maybe like a... I don't even know. Maybe a Taekwondo studio that closed down 25 years ago. Like it's just, it's just a horrible looking place. Um, after 25 long minutes, the finish of this match is cut off somehow. What <laughs> <Yes, laughs> of my notes do? <laughs> and it's not just cut off. It's not cut off where like the video ends. Like the video keeps going. They just cut the part where the finish happens for some reason. So it's a mystery. I mean, I pretty much, I think it, they show him getting pinned. And there's a referee to their credit, because for a second I was worried there wasn't a referee, but there definitely was one. And I will say, if you're into bizarre wrestling venues, you definitely need to check this video out. I'd, I'd love to experience AKE Wrestling Live <laughs> to see uh, what that's fucking like, because this is pretty bizarre. What did you think, Al? Yeah, so um, I saw the Korean flag first, which uh, I thought that meant that this event was being held in a Taekwondo studio. <laughs> but then uh, I didn't see any mirrors, and like I think mirrors are yeah. vital with Taekwondo because you got to see your forms. And uh, I wrote this note down. Like I remember Taekwondo. Like I, I remember thinking that it'd be like an effective MMA skill because like it involves so many cool kicks. But like I feel like every time I saw someone that did Taekwondo, they always got washed. And so yeah, maybe yes. it, this was like a closed Taekwondo studio because no one like wants to do Taekwondo anymore in 2017 <laughs> or whenever this was. I filmed, mean that's right? true. Like everybody has. They figured out the scam that Taekwondo and karate are just for children. Yeah, you're just like, I can break boards, but can I defend myself? Nah, all right, I'm not going to go anymore. Even so. when uh, even when fucking What's-His-Face was doing karate, uh, fuck, why can't I think of his name? And MMA, the Brazilian dude. Oh, Machida? Uh, Machida, yeah. And like, it was just like, how is this good? So guy so good at MMA and he does karate. But you know, after a <laughs> while, he got kind of washed after a while, too, but... <laughs> But yeah, it was like a shock that somebody was good at karate, and that was like their main thing, and they're good at UFC. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make a bold bet or a bold prediction. Uh, no one that does Taekwondo is ever gonna win the UFC belt. I think that's no. a pretty solid bet, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Ultimo Unicorno, he has three horns, which is false advertising. Like I thought <laughs> unicorns only had one horn, so I was confused. Um, so like Mike, it took me a while to realize there was no ring. 
And once I realized that there was no ring and that this match was 25 minutes, I got super mad at Mike. I was really fucking mad at Mike. Um, I don't know. It just made me really pissed off. Um, question for Mike, though. I calmed down. A uh, question for Mike. Do you think Dave Meltzer would want a live report from this show? Like, where do you think he cuts it off at? <laughs> I don't know, man. There's, I, I always, I always skip over like the Mexico part and the other Japan part. But you know, every once in a while, I'll like slow down, and it will be like crowd 350. So, I mean, there's a way less than 350 here, but you know, maybe he would want a report from it. I've never, I like, I've never heard him say no on Twitter. Like, he's always like, "Yeah, send it in." So and he doesn't I like. I don't think he proofreads that part. It, you could probably make shit up, and he'll he'll take it. <laughs> So, um, I will say that this might be some of the best crowd brawling I've ever seen in wrestling. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but like, there's this like very tough looking Latin kid with the uh, AJ Styles gloves on and like with no <laughs> sleeves on his t shirt. And there is a part where like they're brawling and like he decides not to move and uh, he just kind of stands his ground. And while they're brawling, uh, crazy Frank, he like shoot quote unquote like Irish whips, uh, unicorno into this kid. And it looks like this kid got for real fucking hurt. So that was pretty awesome. Um, my last note was like, uh, yeah, this match is pretty weirdly edited. I did notice some like cuts and, uh, we don't actually see the pinfall. Like we saw the, like we saw the yeah. ending spot, but I was just confused as to why they omitted that part. But yeah, I mean, 25 minutes, uh, you're not the G1 climax finale. This shouldn't be yeah. that long. Uh, yeah. knock it off. But, I mean, I guess props for, like, doing all this really rough shit on pretty much concrete. Uh, kudos yeah. to you, Frank and Ultimo. Uh, good for you guys. I would say at least watch it for 10 minutes. It's worth your 10 minutes, at least. <laughs> uh, the last video of the night, unfortunately, is my pick. Um, the title of this video is, I hate the new era, nerdy smarks, and the current crap WWE product. Uh, this vid is brought to you by Vincent, aka Gemini. Um, I found this video hoping to see that Tommy made another Tommy shoot series, but, uh, instead <laughs> I found this, unfortunately. Um, it's about a five or six minute video. Uh, right off the bat, um, I see that Vincent is wearing an SF Giants beanie, and I was already super depressed about it. Um, <laughs> question for Mike. Uh, which term would you rather identify yourself as to a woman, a smart or a backpacker? Oh, backpacker. Like, he has down. I was thinking about how much I hate smart today. People who use that term are, I don't know, man, stop it. Like, it's just, it's a bad <laughs> term. Don't use it. What? So I was trying to think of like, so you and I kind of came up like in the same era. It's like, you and I kind of came up in the same era of like internet wrestling fandom. Like, can you think mm -hmm. of a time where it was like cool to identify yourself as a smart? Maybe like early 2000s? I've, well, I All mean, right, well, cool. when, when did I, that term really, like, it, it was never really cool, but like, when do you think it like came about? I feel like, yeah, cause, uh, that, that one, oh, that one guy was the Scott Keith. His thing was called like smart rant or something like that. And I think that's like the first time I heard it. Yeah, I can't really think of a time it was ever cool. And I feel like if anyone ever was like in real life, yeah, I'm a smart. Like you would get a wedgie like on site. Like yeah, yeah, that sure. has yeah. to be like the most <laughs> embarrassing like label you could like put on yourself. It's I worse feel than like. LARPer, like hands down. Like I'd rather somebody <laughs> be like, I'm a LARPer. And I'd be like, cool, that's a weird hobby. Uh, if somebody said I'm a smart, I'd be like, I have the same hobby as you, but you still deserve a wedgie. <laughs> yeah. Like I guess we got years in the game. We got stripes on the fucking shoulders, but like, I would never say I'm a smart. It's yeah. fucking weird. And so like, um, Vince talks about how he hates smarts for five minutes. And it kind of made me realize that one of the hallmarks of like annoying internet people is that they kind of make up these arguments to like win. And like Vince states that smarts, like they believe that NXT Brooklyn was the best show of all time. And I'll go out on a limb here and I'll say that no one, no one ever said that ever on the internet. Like, I'm willing to bet some real money on that. Like, that never happened. And so, like, that part was pretty ridiculous. And then he outs himself as a Warriors fan. And now my blood is really <laughs> boiling. Like, what a corny guy. And so, I think in some, like, this kind of accurately captures, like, one of the most grating sections of wrestling fandom. Like, I guess VRTL PSA. I don't think it's ever been cool to be a smart. What'd you think, Mike? 
definitely not. Um, this video brought me down a really dark, depressing path, and it made me wish the AKE wrestling video was 50 minutes long after watching this, just to <laughs> just to ruin your day. But um, so I was really pumped to watch this video when I saw L at it, and so I rushed home and I watched it, and I was like, "This kind of sucks." Uh, you know, I hate this. I hate this guy. And I was like, <laughs> I, and I was like, oh, he has 5,000 subscribers. That's kind of a lot. And, and I was like looking at him. I was like, he looks familiar. And I put two and two together about a year ago. This video is unfortunately deleted from the internet. I had, I had people on the case looking for this video for me. <laughs> uh, this dude, this dude has been on the internet for a minute. This Gemini 888 character. Uh, and he makes like, this account that this video is from has 2,000 videos for, uh, starting j- from June 13. That is uh, an average of about two videos a day, which is uh, you need a life, dude. Like, can't, <laughs> like that is just fucking real. That's some sad shit. So that got me bummed out. Um, but what I was getting at was I was like, this guy looks familiar. And I remembered about a year ago, I saw this video. This guy is it's the same guy. He's sitting in the car. And he's talking about how he uh, paid the, for the Sunny Skype chat and like how he was <laughs> masturbating to it. And just like, you know, he was like describing it in great detail. And I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it's like about how his wife caught him and left him too. That part I might have like fabricated in my brain. But the Sunny part, like, like call, talking about it in gory detail is very true. That is 100% true. <laughs> the other part might have just been like my foggy brain making it up. But either way, it is one of the like most cringeworthy videos I've ever seen on the internet. So then. Sorry, I thought I heard something. So then I, um, I, <clears throat> sorry, I got all flustered. I heard somebody yell, but <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> No, so then, like, I was pretty bummed after that, but while trying to uh, find this video to put two and two together, I was just led down this path of, like, other men, other grown adults making these same types of videos, and, you know, I see a lot of complaining about wrestling, like, on our Twitter feed and on Instagram and, you know, just all over the internet, a lot of complaining, and I'm usually kind of... uh, I guess optimistic about it where I'm like, they're young, you know, they don't have a lot to be depressed about. Like life isn't weighing down on them yet. So it's just like complaining about wrestling maybe seems like a thing that's passion. You should be passionate about when you're young. But once you get like up in age, man, and you're making YouTube videos about, you know, the fucking, (laughs) the, you know, the fed and stuff like that. Like it's just, uh, it's real sad. Like these lonely meatball guys, like one of them I saw was like bald and he had like his Oakley like get shades like on his head. And it's just like, dude, you're inside your own house. Just put your fucking sunglasses away. You look like a jackass. It's just like <laughs> shit like that. And you see all these replica belts in the back. And then I was like thinking and it made me even more depressed because I was like, we do, this is kind of what we do. Like we kind of <laughs> are in the same business. And I got like real bummed out and I was almost just like, maybe I should just quit the show. Like I was just like fucking. Got super bummed out, but I don't think we're this pathetic though. These people are really pathetic. Uh, I'm sorry. I just, like, it was fucking super sad. Um, the only other things I need to add is that he, like Al said, he's wearing this San Francisco Giants beanie and it's the type of beanie I haven't seen since the nineties. I didn't know they still made beanies like this where there's like no brim or like any kind of fold. <laughs> I used to really like those one in the nineties. But now this guy just looks like a fucking dipshit, and he has that that fucking like strong politics facial hair, where it's like kind of a donut around your your mouth. Uh, and I don't know, he looks like a real piece of shit. Like fuck this guy, this guy's the worst. Um, yeah, and like, but I will give him uh, not credit, but I think I don't know. Again, maybe I'm being too optimistic. But I feel like, because I've scrolled through his other videos, and I feel like some of them are just maybe like looking for clicks, and he doesn't really mean this stuff. Because a, a lot of them, out of his 2,000 videos, are like, I'm retiring from YouTube for real. And it's like all these, he's making like these threats, like I'm giving away my 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 uh, video collection, just so stuff like that. So I'm, he might say things like this just because he's like has some kind of like illness where he needs the the clicks or something i don't know but i'm again i'm probably giving him too much credit there is a part where he says that 
uh, Wikipedia, he says he re- read on Wikipedia about WrestleMania 32 and that the Wikipedia page said how NXT was so fantastic <laughs> yeah. and ROH was so fantastic. <laughs> I didn't, I don't even, I didn't need to go to the Wikipedia page to check sources, but it's not going to say ROH was fantastic <laughs> on a, on a Wikipedia page for WrestleMania 32. So this guy is, if he is not joking around or at least trolling and looking for clicks, he is really like just one of the worst, absolute worst wrestling fans <laughs> in the history of the earth. Uh, and while I was looking through his videos to try and find that Sonny video that I unfortunately found out is uh, deleted, he has a video that I hope it's a joke, man, because it's so dark. It's um, the I didn't click on it, but the title was "Why Can't uh, Women in WWE Be Hot and Slutty Anymore." And I was just like, oh, boy, man. And this was, like, you know, made within, like, the last few months. And it's just like, oof. I hope this is, like, some kind of something, like, some kind of joke. Um, I had one more thing, but I forgot to write it down. And it was... Oh, yeah. Um, I will say, I think we talked about it on, on Twitter. Al was, we were jokingly talking about doing like a third episode a month about Yakuza and like our, the lunch we eat and stuff like that. And after yeah. watching, after watching this video and like the videos related to it, I kind of just want to, want to do a third episode, not even a third episode a month, maybe an extra quarterly episode where we actually do talk about other stuff we do because now I'm like, I am like really fucking paranoid and afraid that people listen to this and they view us the same way they view those people. <laughs> and so I want people to know that we have like other interests and we're not always <laughs> doing wrestling stuff and complaining about it and stuff. Cause I don't know, man, this video got me shook, man. It's not even that bad, but just like going down that hole of finding all of the like-minded, uh, middle-aged white men that do this was just fucking, I don't know, man. It took me down a, a dark road. <laughs> the end. So I think I'm just going to pick wrestling matches from here on out because, like Mike, <laughs> it kind of made me pretty introspective, too. Like, all of his points, I was like, damn, I'm kind of like that. I don't watch Raw anymore. I don't really care about 205 Live. I'm not, like, angry from my heart about it, but am I going to go down this road sometime see, soon? I don't know. See, that's the thing. I know I'm never going to go down that road because I don't have – I'm not passionate about that part of – the elements of wrestling yeah. i'm passionate about the elements of wrestling that i like and you know i know wwe is going to be corny like i know that i don't expect <laughs> them to ever not be corny and you know i know like raw is fucking really long and it sucks but you know it's just like a habit to watch it none of that stuff's ever going to bother me they're never going to do anything that's going to like affect my life that negatively where i'm going right. to be like upset about it um so yeah that's it's just like it's still like dark to, for me to at least think that other people won't see that difference between what we do. And so, so like, and I just don't want to be viewed in that same light because it is, it's fucking, it's depressing to watch. Uh, yo, uh, fellow vert bags, if you see anyone subtweeting about our show, hit us up. We want to see it. <laughs> I know one guy that does it and it's pretty hilarious and it makes my fucking heart beat pretty fast because. I know he thinks about us a lot. It makes me really oh, happy. I don't know, you know who that is, but about. I'll, I'll tell you. I later. don't. Well, okay. But um, I'm just kidding. I don't mean that at all. But <laughs> I have thought about this third episode, and like, it, it, I guess it would be like a lifestyle type podcast. Do you guys have any like suggestions on what to talk about? I thought about talking to Mike about Kanye West because we do talk about like the album <laughs> rankings, like yeah, every yeah. year. I feel like maybe we'll do that because I think College Dropout turned ten. This month or some shit. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we might I honestly do some think stuff if, like that. You know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I honestly think like if we do like a one extra quarterly episode, that is not a big intensive thing. And yeah, <laughs> it'll hopefully people will be like, oh yeah, they don't just know about wrestling. Like they're not the worst people on earth. Just so we have that padding. That's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, reference that we have lives in one episode. It'll be good. <laughs> one anyway, episode per quarter is good. One episode per quarter. <laughs> <laughs> that was episode 36 of uh maybe like four more we're gonna hit 40 and that's gonna be it like you can yeah. tell this show is wearing on us um <laughs> hit us on hit us on uh, instagram and twitter at brtl pros hit us on soundcloud hit that heart you know i like it leave us a review on itunes it'd be much appreciated mike uh any last words 
We're not those guys. We're not them. <laughs> not those guys. Not those guys. <laughs> that was episode 36. Peace.